Hey guys, it's Jim. Welcome to another podcast special, and we are talking about Victor Fleming's 1939 masterpiece of epic proportions, The Wizard of Oz. The Wizard of Oz is one of those films that you forget about, but it's always in the back of your mind, and then whenever you rewatch it, all those feelings come back, all that fascination and imagination and magic comes back. It really is a film that will never die, its influence will never stop, it's a timeless film. And of course the story of young Dorothy, played by Judy Garland, who gets swept away to the land of Oz and meets uh, some friends, some fantastical friends and of course an evil witch and she has to try and somehow get back to Kansas by locating the wonderful Wizard of Oz who can hopefully help her out. I know over the years Judy Garland's performance has kind of garnered a bit of a campy reputation. There are accusations that her performance feels a bit phony as Dorothy. For me, it's one of the most memorable performances of all time. I think Judy Garland's actually stunning. For the film they were going for, for the feel they were going for, for the innovation and the kind of staggering spectacle of the film. I think it required a young actress to kind of go over the top a bit, put her all in, to kind of elevate things, you know, and I feel like when she needs to be genuine, she really is. I think your heart goes out to Dorothy in this film. I think it's like she's believable when she needs to be, and in certain moments, yes, she is a bit fantastical, but it gives the film that theatrical flair that it needs. It's not a place you can get to by a boat or a train. It's far, far away. Behind the moon. Beyond the rain. Somewhere over the rainbow. I feel like it's not meant to be a necessarily grounded performance. I feel like it is supposed to be a film where she kind of captures that storybook character sort of feel. It is of course based on a children's story and I feel like her performance goes along with that. She feels like a character from a children's book. And I feel like because everything around her is following that same suit, I mean obviously when she meets the Scarecrow played by Ray Bolger and the Cowardly Lion played by Bert Lahr and the Tin Man played by Jack Cayley, all these characters really play off each other well and have a chemistry and really understand what the film is meant to be. That kind of almost bizarre and almost dark and strange feeling of children's stories but also the fantastical, the fun, the colourful, the imagination of it. I love that it kind of walks that line of being a bit odd and strange and almost nightmarish because it does the whole thing is like a child's fantasy and sometimes children's fantasies are messed up they would feel a bit disturbing to us but the child actually experiences it as really lovely and really nice and really wholesome and the film is nice and wholesome but when you watch it as an adult there is an element of strangeness to it and that's what i like that's why i feel like these films still resonate to this day because i feel like adults can watch them and get this kind of strange satisfaction out of it realizing that there was something odd to children's stories and it's not as dark as other children's films of course but there are moments there where it goes there but it feel like it should because again what stuff like wizard of oz understood is that children have a dark sensibility sometimes and you have to cross those barriers you have to navigate that side of childhood the dark side of it uh the sense of fear of change and the sense of um confusion and and not knowing where you're going in the world that's part of childhood and the wizard of oz really really drives that home it is all about dorothy's kind of coming of age and her desire to escape and to understand her place in the world and i feel like everyone she meets is of course a reflection of that you know all these characters that she meets are missing something just like Dorothy's missing something. Now, and I've never really known how to take this, whether you're supposed to think The Wizard of Oz is a dream of Dorothy, like completely a dream, or you're supposed to think that she genuinely went to Oz and this place does exist somewhere in the ether. And I like not knowing that. Again, it goes along with that mysterious nature of child fantasies. Was this real? Was this wasn't? Well, we don't need to know. I don't know if the books actually ever say whether it was real or not, but I don't need to know that. 
I like that ambiguity. I like that feeling of being swept up on an adventure and not knowing whether it was all the imagination of a child and if it was all her kind of angst and confused and wrapped up in a strange nightmare. I think my favourite out of the characters she meets is the Scarecrow played by Ray Bolger. I think he's the most welcoming and wholesome but I think the Tin Man is spectacular played by Jack Haley. I feel like there's, there's some real emotion conveyed through him and it's incredible he manages to do that because he's obviously made completely of tin. I could stay young and chipper and I'd lock it with a zipper if I only had a heart. These characters, all they've got really is, is their face to remote, obviously, but Lara is a county lion. He brings forward lots of emotion through just his, his voice and his mannerisms and he really does feel like a, a lion. He doesn't feel like a human in a suit and every performance of these three feels so genuine and there's so much dedication to it. You're right, I am a coward. <laughs> I haven't any courage at all. I even scare myself. <laughs> very, very physical performances and very impressive performances for the time. Obviously incredibly ahead of their time, just in terms of the makeup and practical effects and what these actors had to endure. And obviously The Wizard of Oz is a very magical film. There was magic going on with these performances. There was magic going on with the creation of these characters. It was something that had never been done before. And that gives The Wizard of Oz even more of a fantastical flair because it really was wonder going on on the set, let alone in the movie. Margaret Hamilton puts in an unforgettable performance as the Wicked Witch of the West. She's still really creepy. She really, really is. And I love how she kind of looms over the film. Her presence is always there, even when she's not on the screen. She obviously does loom over proceedings when she looks into her, her ball and sees whatever she wants to see. She didn't hold back with this performance. And like I said before, it's a real reflection of um, being honest with children and showing them genuine terror in moments. And incredible makeup, incredible line delivery by this character. I'll get you, my pretty, and your little dog too. <laughs> and she really does represent Dorothy's feeling of being repressed. She really does represent Dorothy's feeling of everything is bearing down on her. I feel like that's what the Wicked Witch of the West represents. Ultimately, the idea of the film is that all of this stuff that was kind of straining Dorothy and keeping her stuck in place was ultimately powerless. Like the Wicked Witch of the West, in the end, has no real power as long as you don't fear her, as long as you don't let her do what she wants. It's a great message for kids and for people. All your fears, all your doubts, all your regrets, all your stress, you can overcome. And even though it feels like it's this terrifying, horrifying thing that can't be stopped and it's bearing down on you, it's ultimately powerless. Because the Wicked Witch of the West can just be defeated by just throwing some calm, cooling water on her and you can defeat her. And that's just a really meaningful idea. You know, the three friends she meets ultimately find out that what they want, a brain, a heart and courage, they had them already. And that's a great idea when they meet the wizard finally. And it's almost the idea that if you believe in yourself, even if you don't have the thing, you can kind of organically create the thing that you lack by realising that you're capable. And I really like that idea. I like how the wizard in this isn't a fantastic, magical guy. I like how he's a little bit useless because it goes along with a very human theme of this, of just self-improvement and that you're capable and you're able. Because I always wondered as a kid when I watched this, like, how, what's he going to give these characters? And he doesn't really give them anything other than hope. You could really, to quote John Hammond from Jurassic Park, this is something you could see, you can feel, you can touch. And I love getting absorbed into this world and realising again that magic was taking place on set. That real, organic, unique creativity was happening on that set. The innovation was staggering. What they achieved was monumental with this. And it still looks great. I genuinely think it still looks incredible. I'm still swept up in it. And I would put The Land of Oz in this up against so many films today with what they present because there's just something real and something tangible and something believable about it being there and looking like you can experience it firsthand. Obviously the songs are all wonderful, obviously you've got the Scarecrow of If I Had a Brain, 
and Tin Man If I Had a Heart, the fun little melody on those songs, you've got Somewhere Over the Rainbow which is truly iconic, you've got We're Off to See the Wizard. Oh, we're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz, here he is, the wizard, the wizard, ever a wizard of Oz. They'll fill you with that pep in your step and they're all glorious and they're all full of magic and will stand up to any song you hear in any children's film today. There was just lightning in a bottle, these, these songs. So not only were the three friends she met not missing anything, Dorothy finds out that she wasn't missing anything, that everything she needed was at home. And I love that idea because a lot of films don't push this idea. You know, I feel like lots of films in Hollywood are about you must leave home. There's no place like home is the idea and you know Dorothy promises to never leave home again. I wouldn't say you should definitely never leave home but you don't have to is the idea of this film and it's about looking for the happiness and the joy that you long for somewhere else and you want to escape and leave but ultimately what you need is usually some way you're not looking for where you are. You can create happiness where you are. You don't have to um, escape. There's no place like home. I absolutely love The Wizard of Oz. It's a staggering piece of work. It really, really is. It's, um, it's more than a film. It really is. It's an experience. It's a comfort. It's a mainstay. And you can't say enough about this film. You know, it's a real difficult one to tackle because every single thing about this film is alive and vibrant and classic and wonderful and I'm so glad that these films you can go back and experience them and experience another time of Hollywood where there were still things left to be explored whereas now Hollywood feels quite restricted we've seen everything whereas here the possibilities were endless what do you guys think of this wonderful classic movie The Wizard of Oz let me know in the comments below if you enjoy these podcast special videos click on another one on the screen now and subscribe to this channel if you're a movie geek just like me. I will see you guys next time.